Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. I'm gonna do another shower teardown video. A Galaxy Mystique Deluxe, 9.5 kilowatt. It's got nothing inside identifying it. The knob is broken off up here. I have a feeling it was just pulled out as part of a shower bathroom refurb, which is how these things go. There's a little on off push button, a couple of places for lights, plastic cover, it is what it is. Doesn't look like any of the other showers I've ever seen. I've not seen a Galaxy before, so here's some details. Model A97-900231 Mystique. Serial number, Galaxy. Uh, sixth month. I'm guessing there's a year somewhere here. I can't see it. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But the 5 is X'd out. So I don't know what that means. Uh, pressures and whatnot there. Glen Dimplex. Okay, so that's who it is. Glen Dimplex, I think, is owned by an Irish fella who's very, very wealthy from electric heaters and whatnot. So, little toggle switch there. Uh, water comes in over here. I'm cautious that this thing's going to leak everywhere. Water comes in over here. It can be rooted up or down. Power comes in over here let's get a bit more let's get a bit more zoom on it in fact and i'm just going to lash into it water comes in solenoid switch flow regulator into the boiler that's very simple okay um pressure release pressure relief and outlet here so it must be relatively modern because it is an all plastic boiler, but it does, we'll see in a minute, it has a, it has a copper top. You'll have to excuse the sound on these videos, sometimes... Sometimes I remove the sound, but I don't think it's that loud anymore. Maybe that's an age thing. Okay, so I need a little screwdriver here. Get this switch off. So this is an on-off switch, and presumably this just on-offs on the solenoid by the looks of things, the live of the solenoid, not the element. So that's yeah. So it's just taking out a solenoid. So without water pressure, maybe maybe this thing here has a pressure thing in it. Let's try and yeah. There's the water. So there's, that's that's just at the pressure, water pressure there. So there, presumably there's a pressure switch up here that we'll get to in a minute. It's still screwed. That's not coming off yet. Water, flow. That's your flow regulator there. That'll screw in and out. And just lets more or less water through. This is a little cover here. I presume you can get a pipe straight in the side, or maybe it's just to make it easier to install. Let's get this off. These strip connectors are handy. They're very big, but they're handy to keep. This one's got little crimp-on fittings on the end. I haven't seen that before. They're kind of good. I just wonder why they used a red one. Oh, it's a smaller size cable, that's why. Okay. Um, where are we? This will all lift out, except for this plastic hose underneath, it's catching it. There we go. I better bring this outside to drain it off. Much better for me. So, does this come off? Yep. So let's try and figure out the wiring now that I've dismantled some of it. It's got a neutral bus kind of arrangement up on top that I've disconnected. 
So that's the neutral side for the two elements. One element here, one element here. So that'll be a high and a low, or one is low and two of them together is high. That's your pressure, no, that's your overheating temperature switch there. Like this one, this came out of another shower yesterday. I don't know why I find so many electric showers, but that's the way it is. Yes, and then a copper top on it, that's what I want to get into. So, solenoid. Like in reality, any of these parts would be useful. The issue is that they tend to fit a specific model of shower and there isn't much to do with it then if you're trying to fit them to another one. So here's a switch with micro switches. So let's pull these off. Micro switches can be handy to keep. My issue already is that I've got a basically a suitcase full of them. Let's just Pull those together. And if we just blast it off. There we go. Just a regular little micro switch. They're kind of handy. Handy to have. There's another screw in there, as I suspected. There we go. So that's just the holder for the neon indicators. And then, what's holding this together? See another screw beneath here to get in there I have to get this off so all of the live goes through this pressure I keep calling it a pressure switch it's a temperature thermal cutout switch which is sensible well all the live for the boilers anyways I guess it doesn't matter if water keeps flowing there's good cable in it to recycle and cut this piece off because because I'm not going to reuse it. Now I have every faith that this works, but there isn't a great market in second-hand electric showers, bizarrely. You'd think everybody would want a second-hand appliance where you put your naked body right next to 10 kilowatts of water, but that's not how it goes. I'm sure you can get them second-hand and get people to install them, but well, good luck to you. They've gone for a lot of screws on here. A lot of nuts, even. So that's the switch on that side. Let's see the numbers on this. 319844319826 60 TF114 I don't know what the different things mean. L48C, L49C, L86C, L75C. I don't know what the differences in these things are. If you know, uh, Please tell me about it in the comments what these different codes mean, because that would be handy to me later on. What happens is, if it overheats, this thing pops up and clicks, and you have to reset it by taking it apart. That's been my experience with a red ring. Um, red ring, I can't remember what type of one it was, but uh, I had one of those that I had to use for a number of years, and I hated it because... The switch wouldn't, the switch would turn off the water, but not the element. It was a right disaster of a design as far as I was concerned, but somebody did it that way for whatever reason. Now, can we get into this element? Before we get into the element, let's have a look over here and see if we can figure out what's going on. So cable's good because you can recycle it. That switch might be useful for something. Little toggle switch locks on. I'll have to get in here somewhere by removing this thing, but how does that get removed? Let's try it like this. There we go. All right, and a spring, and that's a knob. And I'm guessing these, yeah, these two things are ramps for the micro switches. So to turn on one or two micro switches, if I had left that in position I would know what I was talking about so it went like that and those micro switches went 
here. And so depending on, you can hear it clicking on and off. So I'd either have one on or two together on for one element or two. It's that simple. And in here, what's in here then? I'm guessing some kind of a... Some kind of a thing that if there isn't enough pressure, it won't let it run somehow. So the water pressure is coming up through this pipe up to here and into the back. And yeah, there's a little diaphragm and a thing there, plunger there. So there's something happening there that I wasn't paying attention to. But that will stop the power coming on if the water isn't coming out under pressure or enough pressure. A little diaphragm there. It's just, it's not rubber, it's some kind of plastic element. And so there's a couple of the other things, I don't know why that's pink, that's weird. A couple of useful springs. If they weren't pink, I'd keep them. This big spring, I don't know. I don't know what that would be useful for. It's a low pressure switch, a low pressure spring. Now, can I get in here without cutting it apart? Yeah, I think I can on this one. Some of these are kind of sealed shut, but this one, the plastic strap sealed it. It's got water in it. It's got two O-rings and a piece of copper pipe. This is why, ultimately why I go in here, which is nonsense. Um, so there was a little piece of copper pipe stuck in here and you have to get it out. You have to kind of wiggle it to pop it out. Pull it out with the pliers. There we go. It's just held in with an O-ring, but by pulling it out you damage the end. Nevertheless, copper is copper. Sometimes they're stainless steel, sometimes they're plastic. That's a copper element. You can recycle that. Depends on your scrapyard, what they'll give you for it. Maybe braze copper if you're lucky. Maybe elements if you're not. It is what it is. Yeah, so I'd say it was one or both. Sometimes they're clustered, one, at one, one inside the other, but in this case, they're just two separate elements. And the more water you pass over them, the colder the water is because it can't heat it up as quickly. I think there's not much more to say about this. Galaxy. Glen Dimplex. Showers with style. That won't focus. There you go. Now, questions or comments, leave them below. Maybe you learned something. It's good to know what's inside these things sometimes if they break. Thanks for watching. See you later.